Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another 6x6 paper pad tutorial, this time featuring the Doodlebug Pot of Gold 6x6 paper pad. I'm going to be using the entire paper pad today as well as those icon stickers. They're from actually a different St. Patrick's Day Doodlebug paper pad. Um, I just at the time when I ordered it, I didn't realize I was ordering from two different collections, but I'm going to make it work today. This particular collection that I ordered is the Pot of Gold collection, as mentioned, and it has four of each paper. So I got started with this large sentiment, and it takes up almost the whole piece of paper. So I wanted to figure out a way to use it without using that much white space. So I trimmed it out with a square never ending die from Cat Scrappiness, but you could also do this with some paper trimmers. And therefore when I was able, when I flipped it over, instead of having the white border, I could then have the back of the paper. And the back of the paper is this four leaf clover design. So I could then fit the sentiment right into that hole that is left on the other side of the paper. And I realized this after I'd already cut one. So this was the plan that I did for three of the four different um, large sentiment cards. And that made it really simple, but I did have to come up with an alternate plan for the one that I had previously cut. And it was kind of a plain card. So I decided this would be a good place to add some of my stickers. I know that there's going to be a lot of cut aparts because there was four sheets of cut aparts and there were a couple of designs in each one. So I wasn't too worried about running out of stickers and like I said I wanted to kind of jazz up this card a bit. I do think you could choose some other things to um, add some interest to the cards. Maybe some rhinestones or nouveau drops would look great. I tend to avoid some of that stuff just because it could be a choking hazard for young children and I do donate a lot of my cards. When I was working on this second card here, I had thought about pulling in some twine to use up some twine. I do that sometimes when I'm working with my 6x6 paper pads. I pull out another supply from my stash and try to combine it with the paper pads to show you how you can sort of bust through your stash of paper, but also of a different supply. But I found that with this particular paper pad, because the choices of paper was pretty limited, there is four of each sheet. So once I make a card and I make four of it, I'm running out of pattern paper, like solid big pieces like this pretty quickly. And those I find to be pretty to, pretty easy to use with other supplies. But when I'm really kind of traveling, trying to piece together cards from scraps, it's much harder to use extra embellishments. So for this use of the yellow twine, which did actually use up this particular bit of yellow twine that I had since I made the four cards, I am going to just wrap it around the card twice. I'm going to keep it simple like that. You could also choose to tie a bow if that fits your personal style better. I find tying bows to be a little bit tricky and kind of frustrating. And so since I was working on so many cards, I decided not to do it. I also wasn't sure like in this design where the bow would stick out anyway. I did decide to start with the most obvious cut aparts like the ones that I knew made sense and I just wanted to put right on a card like this one said March 17th and then the other cut apart that I'm using as part of the design is um, some little leprechauns I guess with their pot of gold there and I am going to pop them up on foam tape just because I do have that twine back there so if I tried to adhere it flat onto the card it would be a little bit lumpy and I personally don't like that look Plus, you don't have to particularly worry about how thick your cards are when donating to cards for hospitalized kids. Some of the other organizations might have some rules about the thickness, depending on exactly the purpose of the cards, but for them it doesn't really matter, so I can use the thicker foam tape and not have to worry about it. There was another one that said, Hoppy St. Patrick's Day. To me, that was a definitely easy one to use, but then there was the Lucky to Have You, which wouldn't really make sense for a donation card, but would be super cute if you were sending one to friends or family. So what I decided to do is since I still liked the rainbow shamrocks that were on that, I could just cover up the so lucky to have you sentiment with the other cut apart. And then I thought about layering it with another cut apart that didn't really suit my personal tastes. Like it didn't really make sense for my purpose. 
when I make these six by six paper pads tutorials, I usually don't add any extra cardstock. I usually try to stick to the six by six paper pad in part because I want to show you that you really don't need a lot of supplies to make cute cards. However, again, with this particular paper pad, there's just not a lot of papers in it. Once you, you know, pull out the cut apart sheets, once you pull out those large sentiment sheets, you really only have a handful of papers that you're working with. And so I did not feel like there was enough paper to do my layering and enough like semi solid paper sometimes. So I am going to add some cardstock. I'm going to add a, a um, some yellow, blue, green, and orange, and they're all from the same Michaels Recollections eight and a half by 11, 110 pound cardstock pack. So you at the very least could go pick up that pack on sale and be able to recreate the cards. And so I just, sorry, I just skipped a whole card there, but I was basically just, you know, um, using some cut aparts to create a design, using some scraps to create a design. This one I've done before. I've done stuff really similar to the particular design I'm trying to create now, where I put together some of the two by three and two by two cut aparts to create a little design. I found myself doing this quite often with the paper pad, like trying to figure out different ways to use the cut aparts because a lot of these cut aparts have a sort of lovish theme to them, which is to me a little bit odd for St. Patrick's Day. I don't really think of it that way, but there's like the you're my lucky charm. Again, that really doesn't make sense for the kind of cards I'm going to send. So I'm turning it over and using the back side. At least that's what's nice about Doodlebug paper is there are two sides. So I don't have to use the single side that I if I don't like it. Um, you also might notice that there are two different patterns on the back of the cut aparts because there are two sheets of cut aparts, which is again why that pattern paper was so limited. And I decided to supplement it with some colored cardstock. With this particular card, it does work out to be smaller than an A2 size. However, I do find it better to glue down all of my pieces and then trim the card. So I still start with an A2 size card, but because these cut aparts aren't always going to be perfectly three inches or perfectly two inches, I would rather cut later and um, just glue everything down first. But that just works for me personally. I did also add some stickers to that card because there was so much semi-solids, you know, there was so much green uh, in the cards, and I wanted to make sure that I really used up those stickers since I only had the one sheet. There was no reason not to just get rid of them all. So I was left with a lot of these three and a quarter by four strips of paper, and that happens because when you take a six by six pattern paper, you can, and you cut it down to an A2 size card, you get four by five and a quarter. So you have a little border if you like that. And it leaves you with a two by six inch strip and a three quarter by four inch strip. And so I have a lot of those three quarter by four inch strips and I wanted to find a way to use them. But with the rainbow, it was just white on white. So again, I pulled in some of that yellow cardstock to make it work. I do want to mention I will have a coordinating blog post that talks about all the measurements. It's not always a very interesting blog post, but it's mostly there so that if you wanted to know what did I cut each you know piece of paper to and so that you could try to recreate some of the cards, that's what's on there. That's usually the main uh, you know purpose of those posts for me. So once I used up a lot of those big A2 size pieces of paper, I was left with the two inch strips which as you've seen me do a million times before, you can make the illusion of another large panel by taping two of the two inch strips together. And a lot of times what I'll do is take a third two inch strip and put it down the middle so that it covers up the seam of the first two. You can use a smaller piece if that stretches your um, supplies a little bit further. And then I did another thing, which is a little bit unusual for me for these six by six paper pads. And you can leave me feedback if you, you know, like the old way where I don't really add a lot, or if you do kind of think it's interesting to see how to pull in some of your other supplies, let me know. You know, I'll probably continue to do a mix depending on um, the circumstances of the individual paper pads, but it is good to know what you guys think and what you like about the videos. So I did pull in the happy, happy add-on and it gives you a happy 
and then sentiments for most holidays, including St. Patrick's Day. And St. Patrick's Day is one that I think is a little bit trickier to find stamp sets for. So I do like that Lawn Fawn even thought to include it in this, um, this you know, happy everything sort of set. So I'm stamping the happy in some orange distress oxide ink on the yellow paper because you know, I've already been pulling in that yellow paper, so why not go for it? And I decided on the Distress Oxide ink because I actually find that it stamps sentiments really nicely, and that little bit of pigment makes it actually give better impressions than some of the dye inks that I've used. So I can just put it on a stamp block and be happy. And I'm going to do the same thing with the St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to stamp it in a green Distress Oxide ink, Probably Lucky Clover. That would be like the obvious choice, right? You know, St. Patrick's Day Clover there. Um, so I'll stamp that on that white sheet there. Actually happens to be um, a scrap cut from that large sentiment sheet. But of course, you could pull in some white cardstock, as I always do because I use white card bases. I'm also going to use the die cut set that pairs with the happy stamp set to cut out the happies again just to make them a bit more interesting and when I you know took the time to do this I did stamp several of the St. Patrick's Days and several of the happies so that I could use them on maybe you know more than just this card if I'm going to take the time pull out all those supplies I'm going to stamp a few because I'm going to be working with this in this whole paper pad when I sit down with these paper pads I usually do it all in one day um, I'm noticing here that my camera is looking a little bit funny and I wonder if it's that rainbow striped paper that um, is just like, I don't know, if you, don't stare at it too much I guess. It's giving me, it's making my eyes a little wonky. Anyway, I had pulled in some of the blue cardstock as I mentioned before. I was going to use blue, orange, yellow, and green all from the same pad or all from the same pack I guess. It's not really a pad, they're not attached together. And I'm taking one of those large rainbow stickers. One of the reasons I picked that is because I believe there are two of those rainbow stickers. So I could make two of this card, which was perfect because I had two of those rainbow backgrounds, which will hopefully be off the screen very soon and stop messing with your eyes there. But it's, you know, a simple little design. The um, Happy St. Patrick's Day balanced out the rainbow in the corner. So then I have two more of the ones that I created with the two inch strips. So if you consider that there's four of each pattern paper, there would be four two inch strips left over from each pattern, which is how I was able to create two more exactly the same cards. And so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna pull a large piece of solid card stock to extend my paper collection a bit. I'm gonna use the Make-A-Wish. I thought that one was fine. I was a little bit not sure what that had to do with St. Patrick's Day. I don't usually think of St. Patrick's Day as a day for making wishes, but then like I'm not an expert in St. Patrick's Day. Not a big holiday for me. Just, you know, cute because it has rainbows and leprechauns. And I am going to, again, go into the stickers because I know at this point, how many about cards I have left and how many stickers I have left. And so I'm going to make a point to try to use some more of them. I'm creating a little like visual triangle around the center clover with the little gold pieces stickers that came in that sticker sheet. And then I'll recreate that card a second time with some similar stickers. Here I have some solid orange and solid green cardstock and some cut aparts. So again, here I am pulling in quite a bit of extra paper essentially by using this cardstock. As you can see, I use my ATG gun for most things um, and that's because it's a really strong adhesive, but it doesn't have very much time. There's not a lot of wiggle room. So I do have to be careful about trying to lift up my paper I have had people share some tricks for it. I've heard you can use floss and sort of pull it underneath and that can be quite helpful. And my friend Valerie taught me that you could heat it up. And so if you put it with a heat gun and then try to pull it up, because you notice there I did that with the green background. I didn't center it perfectly. So I just figured I'd mention that tip and thanks Valerie for that tip. So there is the you color my world sentiment and again, that's a little bit lovey, like not really so much what I would typically send, 
but I figured I would send a handful of these cards to friends and family. I don't think I'm going to make any cards outside of this paper pad for St. Patrick's Day just because I don't own a lot of St. Patrick's Day things. And I kind of, you know, I, I bought this paper pad for that purpose because I don't have a lot of other things. So I thought it was okay to use it, you know, occasionally use one of those since I would use some of my cards in that way. And of course, if you were sending these to friends and family, maybe you would want to use more of those sentiments. I am to the point that I really only have scraps and cut aparts left, but I'm still going for it because I don't, you know, they're fairly large scraps in many ways for one. And so I don't want to just toss them. Um, and again, like I said, I don't have a lot of St. Patrick's Day stuff. So whatever I make with this paper pad is all I'm going to have. So I'm going to try to get as many cards out of it as possible. I'm going to take these strips and cut them down to four inches so that they will be able to sit on the card with a little bit of a border and use that to build up a focal point area in the center of them. Pull in some of those sentiments that I had already stamped out previously because you know I remember I said I stamped a whole bunch of them that's kind of my go-to method is if I'm going to stamp images I'm going to stamp several if I'm going to color images I'm going to color them in batches and it's kind of the same thing here if I'm going to die take all the time to like die cut those sentiments if I'm working in a big uh, batch like this I'm going to do a few so I've used the leftover cut aparts and the scraps to basically fill the card here. I'm using that You're My Lucky Charm that I didn't really have much of a purpose for, the You Color My World. I made one of that card because it was a scrap card and because I knew I didn't need a lot of them. And this has helped me to build up a block and cover the piece of pattern paper. Now, the rainbow was part of that cut apart. It was a two by two cut apart. And I didn't like the white. So I just fussy cut out the blue circle, the, you know, the part with the rainbow in it. And to me, that made a much better card design. I am using multimedia mat from Ranger to glue down the happy because my tape gun is not going to get just those little tiny pieces between the letters. There's when I usually tend towards liquid glue, but you could also use something like stick it adhesive. So at this point in the card making, I am pretty much done. Like I know that I don't have many cards left. So I started doing something that I kind of regret and putting a lot of stickers on this card. I thought, oh, I'm going to arrange it in one of the, in like the fun, whimsical gathering way. In the end, it kind of felt a little snicker, uh, sorry, sticker sneeze to me. I don't know if you ever heard that expression, but it kind of looks like, they kind of refer to it like when somebody looks like they sneeze stickers all over the place. It's just like random everywhere kind of thing. And it, I don't know, I, I didn't really love the way this one turned out. I think I went a little overboard with the stickers, but it's going to go to a young child who's probably going to be totally fine because I know some young children as a teacher and they love stickers and they're not nearly as um, judgmental about how many stickers are on something. They have a little bit more, uh, the more the merrier feel anyway. So there off to the left is my pile of what's left. I still have two make a wishes and I'm, and I'm thinking like those work as a card sentiment. So I really kind of want to still make a card and I have all these strips of green and these are created from when I took that large white scent, the large sentiment on the white background and I trimmed it down to five and a quarter by five and a quarter so that it would fit in a five and a half by five and a half card, which meant that there were these like little strips left over from all of them. And I thought, well, I've been doing this, you know, block building thing where like I'm putting all these little scraps together with the white space of the card in between and why not keep up with that theme and do the same thing here so basically I did kind of get a little bit bold and started just taping things down because I was pretty confident how it was going to work out but I wanted to do a few strips then add the make-a-wish sentiment and have it make sure that there was at least one more strip on the other side. So I'm going to glue down 
the strip that's all the way on the right first and then center my sentiment in between them. Now, you don't have to be exact with this for a couple reasons. One, it's a handmade cart. It doesn't have to be perfect. And again, I'm sending these to children. They're not going to be like, well, there's 0.1 millimeters between these two strips and 0.2 millimeters between those strips. Like, they don't care. And it's handmade and it still looks great and it's just a little bit off and that's fine. So I'm laying out my strips in the center and I did just hold them up to each other and cut them out to be the same rather than trying to measure it. There's no point in, in, you know, in fussing with the exact measurements. I think that would honestly take so much longer. So I, um, you know, cut a few of them. I thought three wasn't quite enough. Add a fourth one in, call it a day. So now there's these kiss me and I'm like, not going to use that. That, no. Like again, sending it to a loved one, sure, for your kids, whatever. But for my purpose is I don't need kiss me leprechauns. And uh, I know somebody had left a comment on one of my videos, and I'm sorry, I forgot their name right now, but she said, you know, I, I saw this paper pad and there are a lot of love sentiments. Like I'm kind of wondering how you did it because I actually avoided the latest Doodlebug collection so punny. Some people had asked if I was going to do that one. I said no, and I, and I avoided buying it just because there's a ton of love sentiments on it. So I have those kiss me sentiments. Uh, cut apart and I have four of them and I know I'm not going to use them but I still have a -a make-a-wish and I do want to use that one so what I decide to do is again just block out my scraps all over a piece of white cardstock. I think that in this case having good quality card bases is making a difference since I really am letting them show a bit more. I'm you know having a lot of white space in between my elements. I think that having a high quality card base matters. I did for a long time use thinner card bases, but now that Michaels has that, and I I rave about them all the time, you know that, sorry, but now that Michaels has 110 pound white card stock for a very reasonable price, 100 sheets for $15 full price, and you know you don't have to pay full price at Michaels, get a coupon. And um, so I don't know, like I'm quite content to have them. So that's literally all that is left of the paper pad and the sticker sheet and I even think I added those stickers to a card because I was like it's so close to fully using it up but yeah so that's it and here's all my cards there are 31 cards some of the original designs there are four of so you know four of this one the leprechaun one four of the uh sorry three of the rainbow one because there's a few less of those strips um, four of that particular cut apart design there. It was a little bit shorter and I added some of the different, oh yeah, that's where I added the, see, I told you I was going to add them to something, add them to that card, that, uh, card that I skipped over earlier. And just again, you get the basic idea. Again, everything's on my blog. If you want to see it slower, if you want to know the measurements, if you want to know, you know, which one, like see the unique ones. Cause as you saw, a few of those were like, there's not more than one of it, but there's two of the rainbow, two of that make-a-wish, four of the hoppy, and et cetera, et cetera. So this is the strange thing. I'm giving away Christmas stickers because there's no St. Patrick's Day stickers left, and I forgot to give away these Christmas stickers. So leave a comment on this video. Let me know which one you like best, and I will send you Doodlebug Christmas stickers, and you can hold on to them for next year. So it also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you links to the products that I use in the video description below. And um, there should be a link at the end of the video to see more of my six by six paper pad tutorials if that is something that you enjoy. And since we have a minute here while I show you some more of the cards, I do just wanna say thank you so much for all the support, leaving the comments, encouraging me. And um, I don't know, I just, I really appreciate all the time you guys take to interact here on YouTube. Have an awesome day. Bye.